How are you guys doing? Welcome over here. Hey, if you guys are new to the channel, please subscribe. We are uploading three videos a day currently with what is going on in Ukraine. I'm actually in between videos and all night. I am live streaming on this channel. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And we're not just live streaming stuff here. We're actually live streaming directly, feed directly from Ukraine. In the streets of Ukraine, we have nine cameras that we're able to pull feed from and actually watch all night, all day, and in between episodes. So please subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. And thank you so much for being over here. First thing we're going to go out the gate, I've got maps. We go over maps on here. My, my, myself and my buddy who is actually not here right now, he will be back tomorrow. We were in the military for, I think he was in for like 15 years and I was in for seven. We, we fought in both the wars, Afghanistan, Iraq. He's actually spent a ton of time over in Ukraine. We understand maps and, and kind of strategy. So I'm going to go over that quickly with y'all. Out the gate, Russia has been getting their teeth kicked in because because they do not, they, they were not expecting this kind of of swift reaction from the Ukrainian people, and they're all standing their ground, and they're all bunkered in really heavily. They, they, they have 45 positions, and they're absolutely crushing these Russian forces who came in. Actually, I'm going to be honest with you guys, they came in a little bit unprepared, ill-prepared, untrained. Like ter They should be moving at night. I have no idea why Russia is not moving at night. You know, you know what I do? I do. It's because they're not prepared. They have no idea how to use their night vision, all that kind of... They have no idea. So this map does not look much different from what we saw earlier. I'm going to scroll down here to the south. They have not taken much. I, I want to call this town right here that I'm circling. I always want to call it Tomahawk for some reason, but it's clearly not Tomahawk. But for some reason, I, I, anyway, that, that, that town right there, they had pushed. Russian forces had pushed today. Earlier today, they had pushed all the way up here and around and back down. Now, they've actually been pushed back. Clearly, as you guys can see, this town right here, they have not been able to control. They got hit pretty hard with resistance up on this route that is coming down. They would be coming out of Zap and down to here. They are trying to take this area down here, as I've said before, to help their buddies. Okay. Now, that being said, come this time at night, uh, it is middle of the night there. It's actually probably like 1 in the morning, I believe. What time is it over there? Does it say? Can you give me a time? 1.47 in the morning currently, and they are back to about this they've been pushed back i know that they still control this airfield down here on this end but they need to actually make it all the way over here over the next 24 to 48 hours is what i'm going to anticipate they're going to do okay russian forces that is try to push all the way over there so i'm going to scroll back out just a little bit we're going to go north i'm going to scroll north up to about here they really 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 need to push down to here i know this as much as they do that's going to be a big deal for them they need to, they need a win here they really do need a win I'm going to scroll east over here, just north. We do know coming the last video, they were staging here and they were bringing more and more and more tanks and APCs down through here. Okay. Now I did state this. This is for everybody who is new and has not seen the previous video. Quick, fast, in a hurry. The only thing I thought they would be doing was either going south. Okay. That's one plan of action. Or they could be going northwest to help their buddies over here. I'm talking about the Russians, that is, because they're in a currently down here in the south portion, down here in Maripol. They're having a significant battle. They've been shelling and dropping everything they possibly can on here to try to take that over. They have not been able to. Ukraines have absolutely been crushing them, which is fantastic. Way to go, Ukraines. I'm all about it. And the reason why I'm about it is you come and you pick a fight on somebody that does not need to be picked on. By the way, we've stated in previous videos, Ukrainians were severely outnumbered in this in this battle and the civilians have came and they fought tooth and nail to maintain their land and i find that that's that's phenomenal I, I personally find that phenomenal so i'm going to back us out of here and we're going to go over to google earth real quick so here's here's the area that we were just in down here in the so southern region i can't write on this map currently but i'm just going to have to finger it around they control this airbase right here scroll out and pretty much all the way over here to Melitopol and down all right now we're going to move north I'm going to move north. I know I'm going to bounce around in this country, but I'm going to give you guys some, some insight of what's been going on literally from the top to the hour down to last like two hours ago. All right. We have footage of a National Guard base that is currently on fire in this city right here, just north of the area that they, control, uh, that they currently control right here. There is a National Guard base from the unit 3033, and it's currently on fire. We're going to go ahead and show a video of that right now. Пацаны, уебало в этот в депо троллейбусный нахуй. Горит к ебаной матери. So there's actually something even bigger, I think that's how it came through, is there's the Azaz regiment has actually reported that their troops have stopped the enemy breakthrough between Maripul and Volen 
Kukov. I'm sorry, and enemy forces have retreated, so we're going to go. We're already right here down in the southern region again. Here is Maripool. And just north of that on these, this main MSR route you guys see right there, MSR right there, H20. I'm just going to call them MSR because of the roads. And there's Volan Kanaf. And as you guys see, here's Mola Kanaf. This, been, this, this right on the edge of the contested regions this entire time. So this entire region right here as I'm drawing, they was contested. And the Azaz resident has actually pushed them back once again. Just here recently over the last two hours has pushed them, has made the Russian forces back and retreat. All the way back to where they came from. So right now, Russian forces are making absolutely no headway down there in that south southeastern region where they've been trying to, to gain for the last three days. Now, going into the fourth day, I'm telling you, they're gonna, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse down in that area. I have no idea if they're ever going to give that. They can't really give that up. All they can do if they cannot get that. So they had to retreat back this way. I'm telling you guys, these tanks that are coming in here from over Kharkiv, this would probably be the most possible route for them to come down is to come down and help them and try to pinch off this area down there. That is what I am going to, I'm going to say that's what's probably going to happen. Let's go back north just for one second because you have these contested areas up here and they have ease of route and access down through here. They, they literally can pinch off Kiev on both ends if they need to and they also can send some people from the east this way. All right, I'm going to erase this. Give me one sec. On even bigger news, I think this is probably huge. Six or seven hours ago, the Chechenian forces have actually said that they've staged and they've gotten themselves into Ukraine. And we all know that the, well, Vladimir Putin is doing this for one reason, one reason or another. He's going to utilize them to cause mayhem, destruction, and like just basically kill squads is all they are. All right, we had to deal with them in Afghanistan and Iraq. They're, they aren't, they're not terrible fighters. One, they're not. They aren't. They're just somewhat Muslim extremist group of fighters that are coming in and, and they're going to wreak havoc. And going to throw this out there. Ukrainians have actually taken out their top general just outside of Kiev. This is very, 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 very important. It's going to go either both ways. It's going to piss them off, the Chechnyans off significantly, or it's going to kill the morale. Literally within the first six hours of them entering Ukraine, their general was just killed. That's a pretty significant area, a pretty, pretty significant event. So we're going to pop back over here to the Google Earth side of things. So Mykolaiv is another city just northwest of Kyrgyzstan. We are on the most southern edge uh, just north of Crimea right now. So here we go. Russian or, uh, Russian forces have tried to push past Kyrgyzstan and in Mykolaiv, and they've actually been pushed back once again, and we have video of that right now, so we'll go ahead and play so, that. And I'm going to pop back over to my, my little handy dandy what areas are controlled by whom. And you could see right now that Russian forces have, in fact, controlled this main route going out of Kyrgyzstan and into Mykolaiv, but they were once again pushed back. So they're they're hitting heavy, 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 heavy resistance. The only thing that I could I could possibly think that they may end up doing is increasing the amount of shelling they're doing or bringing in more. It's a little bit difficult for me to state that they're going to drop more ordnance. I don't think that's going to be the case. I They've already got 50% of the amount of troops that they put on the borders already inside of Ukraine. I I don't know. They're, they're not looking very good. I'm sure the morale is very, very low with the Russian military right now. And even crazier note, they took out a Chechenian guy, a general today. They also captured a Russian major. And this is the crazy part about being on social media during a, a wartime and invasion or whatnot. This is something that I didn't have to deal with when I was in. But this guy is being put on blast. I mean, I, I fought in Afghanistan 10 years ago. And I didn't have to worry about being put on blast on social media or whatnot if I ever got captured. Like, think about this. A Russian major... Like, you know how demoralizing that's got to be for the Russian troops, the Russian army, that their higher-ups are being captured and then put on blast on social media for the entire world to see? Everybody has their eyes on Ukraine right now. And this is what they're seeing, is Russian majors being put on blast on social media. So we're going to be overlaying some satellite imagery that they have currently right now. This is out of Nova uh, Kokosha. I'm going to go over to my handy-dandy map and give you guys a little bit of circle. Um, this is in the most southern region of Ukraine, currently just north of Crimea. 
uh, outside of Kirsten. So this is this is exactly the area where that satellite imagery is is being shown, and that is literally where they are staging. And I'm going to assume, I don't want to be that guy to assume, they're either going to go east or west here. I don't know how much more north they're going to go, but I would assume they're probably going to take these these troops that we saw that are on that satellite imagery going out of Nova Kosha into Kirsten and probably trying to make a push over there, which they've been trying to push for the last three days, clearly. And the other way I could see is possibly maybe going north and trying to clean clear out some more white space, maybe going up this way. The most likely action you're going to see out of that, that convoy is probably going to be going into uh, Mikolaiv over there on the more western portion, the, the farthest west portion that they, they currently control. And even crazier news, pull away from this map real quick, is the fact that Russia has now been pulled away from SWIFT. So if you guys don't know what SWIFT is, SWIFT is kind of a big deal. SWIFT is pretty much like the social network for banks. It doesn't have, um, that doesn't have money moving around, but provides information about where the money is actually going. All right, so how, how reliant is Russia currently on SWIFT? About 300 leading banks and organizations in the country are users of SWIFT. More than half of Russian credit organizers are represented in SWIFT, and Russia is ranked number two of users on the entire platform, second only to the United States. And how would Russia actually be impacted by the ban of this? I, I wanted to know, so I kind of kept going. Uh, excluding Russia from SWIFT would restrict the country's access to financial markets around the world. It would almost be like cutting the country off from the internet, which is absolutely insane if you think about that. And because Russia's federal budget is so highly dependent on taxes generated from the export of raw materials like oil and gas, it would make it much, much more difficult to conduct sales and then get money that is needed for country's budget. And then I always want to find out, is there actually alternatives for Russia to be using other than, uh, other than SWIFT? Uh, following the Russian invasion of Crimea in 2014, the Central Bank of Russia actually planned and developed a SWIFT alternative. Now, the problem with that is, there's only about a dozen foreign banks that are using it and including one Chinese bank, meaning it is literally going to help them literally zero. There's only a dozen banks on planet Earth that are actually using this. Um, so it's not really going to do anything. For most of the assets are actually within SWIFT. Imagine this. There's, there was a gentleman I was reading who was, in, who was actually staying over in Russia right now inside of a hotel. The receptionist area down there, the hotel lobby, the person in the lobby, is having them currently right now pay for their room, even though they might be there for another week, because they don't know if their transactions will actually go through once a swift uh, thing kicks in. Think about that. You can't like imagine us having we can just go to the store and buy bread. They're not even going to go to do anything. They can't do anything. Literally being cut off like North Korea from the entire planet right now, which is crazier because the video from yesterday we we're talking about why what is what is what does Biden need? What is he going? He said he's going to wait thirty. Like you're going to wait thirty days for what? Just cut him off now. He's going to he's going to wait to see. And of course, EU comes out so they're going to Biden's like you know what. I think it's a good idea. I think we should join them. We should have what we should have been doing is America should have been first in leading and everything. We should just cut them off entirely. Cut them off. And of course, Putin and them they came out with some stuff saying that we were helping um, Ukraine forces in the sea with aerial drones and whatnot, and that wasn't true. They're trying to push the propaganda machine, which they have a pretty good one. They do have a pretty good one. They've actually cut their own citizens off from the, using Twitter. And Facebook has cut them off. YouTube has cut off the RT network. If you guys, if you guys are on Facebook and you guys see RT, it's green box with black logos, black letters. Excuse me. That's actually a Russian-owned um, enterprise or a company, whatever you want to call it. That's entity, I guess, a Russian-owned entity. And now Facebook is now allowing, not allowing them, and so was YouTube not allowing to even monetize. So they're cutting off literally everything Russian-oriented media-wise outside. Facebook's starting to cutting them off to allow them. They're not even allowed to run ads anymore. Well, they're not going to be able to take their money, of course, because of Swift. But anyway. And also on the list, Germany is now sending 400 anti-tank weapons and 14 armored vehicles along with 10,000 tons of fuel. 10,000 tons of fuel. So the thing is, we don't have to give them troops. The entire country of Ukraine is willing to fight. Literally laying, like, like all of them are willing to fight. All the NATO countries are like, you know what, we don't need to give you cash. How about we just give you javelin missiles? Or how about we give you AT-4s? There's so many, so many photos and videos I've seen of Ukrainian soldiers running around with their version of, of like an AT-4 slash javelin mix. I don't know exactly what it's called. But it's just a amped up AT-4 that's made to tank out tanks and, and, and up armored vehicles and such. Tons of them. And that's what they're getting. They're getting that right now. Russian forces actually just hit an oil depot, which is kind of a big deal, just southwest of um, Kiev, which I'll pull it up right now for you guys. Actually, I'll keep it on this map right here. Just southwest, I did look at it. Uh, we're on this little map up here. So Kiev has been hit a billion times pretty much. It was somewhere in the vicinity down here, which is kind of a big deal um, when you're fighting in wars and stuff like ammo. 
uh, oil, gas, food. You you need everything to, to keep going. I mean, you got to feed feed the beast pretty much. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So anyway, there you go. There's some big stuff. I expect a lot over the next 48 hours coming out of the Chechen forces coming in. And Russia really, really needs a win. Over the, like They really do. The last three days, Putin thought he was going to come in here and take it over in 12 hours. And imagine the last three days, guess what he's been doing? He's got his absolute teeth kicked in. Teeth, they've got their teeth kicked in. And I don't even think these Russian forces even know what they're fighting for at this point. Like, they they just, I like, I don't see it. Ukraine has a reason to fight, right? We're like, what do they even need? So, they're literally fighting for one guy on top that's just trying to get back all of his land that he had when he was in the KGB. That's the God honest truth, and we all know it. We've seen Russian tanks driving around with Soviet flags on the back of them. They have no, like, that's what they're there for. All right, more power to them. They're going to have to deal with their Ukrainians because they're fighting tooth and nail for their land. So anyway, we'll be back in the morning. I do love you guys. Remember, three videos a day. Please subscribe. I do love you. I am out. I'm out of here. I do love you guys. I'm out.